here on News Talk 600 KTBB. So it'll be uh, Robert E. Lee on defense for Zach Eskridge is their fine senior quarterback. Tony Dabney is a 5A junior running back. The wide receivers include Michael Daniels, Joey Latta, Patrick Moore, and Andy Tanner, who leads the district with 32 catches. Cole Wardell is the tight end when they use one. Colton White, Zach Eastup, James Repka, Martin Aguirre, and Josh Steger across their offensive front. For Robert E. Lee, maybe a variety of different formations tonight. If they go with a four-man line, most likely Roderick Brown and Colby Ray start at the ends. Jacoby McKenzie and Mario Trimble moving into a tackle spot tonight. The linebackers include Bandit Man, Matt Uzel, Michael Wall, and George Faber. But again, we'll see a variety of players. Adrian Beard and LaQuette Nichols in the corners. Jonathan Williams and Takari and Kuba, the safeties. We'll see Jeremy Moore. We'll see Tim Hader. Uh, we'll see Michael Hunter, Justin Hansen, Jess Roberts, Mark Brotherton, a combination of players for the Red Raiders. Randy, ready to play a little football? Sure am, buddy. Let's get it going. Now, as they tee it up here, and Jamie Lynn, of course, down on the sideline. Jamie, the weather tonight, just perfect for football, too. Isn't it? it is beautiful out here. Uh, temperatures in the low 70s, a little bit of a wind drop all be going against the wind to start this game, but much nicer than those hot temperatures we have been having. Yeah, and I'll tell you what. Uh, hot up here when we first came in, looking right into the west sun. This is a north-south field. The kickoff is short and to the left. It'll be a Craven bringing it up field to the 20, out to the 24, and a nice play by Robert E. Lee's number 10, Adrian Beer, to bring him down just past the 20-yard line, I think, and around the, no, check that, near the 25-yard line, as that's where the uh, Rockwall Yellow Jackets will start first and 10 again. They move Kinsey, opens in the middle in a four-man line that includes Mark Brotherton. Mark Brotherton instead of Mario Trimble to open up the football game. First down, under center is uh, Eskridge from the near hash. Check that out of the shotgun. He hands off to Dabney, and he finds a little bit of a hole, and he picks up pretty good yardage out to the 32 before the tackle's made by Matt Guzel. It's a seven-yard gain. Randy, Robert E. Lee has been gashed this year by some pretty good running backs coming into this game. Yeah, they have. They've uh, really the quick variety as well. It's a good size ones. Most of them have been in the 5'10 to 180 range. This is a little bit smaller back at 5'8, 165. Second and three just underway. Scoreless shotgun. Eskridge, tall, lanky kid. Draw play handoff for Dabney. Looking outside. He has a little running room to the 36. And that's going to be close and I think a good enough for a first down. Faber makes the tackle. George with 46 tackles coming into the game tonight to lead the Red Raider team of 5'11 June. And Mathis took the pitch that time too, and he got the first down, but he had a nice block on the right side from his tight end, Cole Wardell. All right, so Mathis and Dabney make a pretty good combination back there. Uh, Mathis last year's leading rusher, 628 yards. Jonathan Williams is in the game as a safety, and it's a first down for Rockwall at their own 36 yard line. Far side to short side, handoff. Here's Mathis again, finds a little running room and squeezes between the Red Raider defense lineman up to the 43 yard line. That's another pretty good gain of about six yards on that play before Adrian Beard, the junior, makes the tackle. Kerry Ainsworth standing next to me doing her spotting tonight. We've got Randy Johnson on one side, Jamie down on the sidelines, and Mike LaRue somewhere in the Metroplex tonight. Uh, Williams is in the game for Robert E. Lee. They're playing a lot of five-man secondary. Mark Brotherton trying to run onto the field late. It'll be second down at about four near the 43-yard line, and whistles blow, and you got to wonder if uh, perhaps uh, the uh, Rockwall Yellow Jackets didn't have uh, a problem lining up, and so it'll be too many men on the field that time. Twelve guys on the field for uh, Rockwall, and, and again, sometimes with these teams, Randy, that like to run no huddle, that happens a little bit. Yeah, can, yeah when you're shifting personnel like that, that, that can happen a lot too, Bill. 10-20 to go. Score this first quarter. That'll make it a second down and about eight for Rockwall from their own 38-yard line. Far side the short side, double slot, shotgun, handoff, fake the handoff to Mathis. Eskridge to throw his first pass of the night and floats it downfield, completed for a first down to Tony Dabney at the 48-yard line. Dabney already with uh, 11 catches this year, two touchdowns, made a nice sliding catch in Red Raider territory. That's their second first down. So they've already crossed midfield. And Robert Ely a little bit uh, on the retreat right now. It's a 15-yard game. Two minutes and five seconds into it. Rock Wall's on the move. Two receivers split to the right side. Slot right, shotgun. Hand off Mathis. Mathis squeezes the left side and moves the pile inside the uh, 45 down to about the 43-yard line. A little bit of shoving going on near the end of that play as Colby Ray, the defensive end, 
Steps up for Robert E. Lee and makes the tackle. He's a 5'11 junior, throws the discus on the Red Raider track team, gain a four, and it'll be second down and six. Well, you, what you have right now, Rockwall is just really eating up the inside of Lee's defense, running inside with a smaller back. He's getting behind his good-sized blockers and pushing forward for good yardage. Mario Trimble is in the ball game. They put a man in motion from the 43-yard line. Near hash going right to left. Snap, Eskridge on the rollout. He can run it too, and it looks like he's going to do just that, but not much available to him. He's bashed that time by uh, George Faber for Robert E. Lee. Faber had help over him. Faber was man in on that tackle for the uh, Red Raiders, and uh, uh, that was a pretty good defensive play, Jamie Lent. They, uh, they played the run pretty well. And they roll him out to the right side there, looking for either the pass or run option. The Red Raiders did a nice job of staying on their assignment there. Right place at the right time, bring him down for a short game. Big third down to six coming up for both Robert E. Lee and Rockwall. Rockwall wants to keep the drive alive, and Robert E. Lee wants to get the ball back. They deferred and put Rockwall on offense first. Four-man line, shotgun, third and six at the Lee 43. Fake the handoff, Eskridge back to pass, throws the deep ball, overthrows his intended receiver with coverage provided that time by LaQuette Nicholson on Rockwall's uh, receiver that time. That was uh, Michael Daniels downfield. And he was well covered, I thought, by Nicholson on that play at the 20 yard line. And Eskridge, uh, Bill, just as soon as he let the ball go, the big man up front for Robert E. Lee McKenzie just wraps him to the ground. And he got off just in time, and he really hurried the pass uh, for his intended receiver downfield with the pressure. And uh, Kerry Ainsworth tell us that Roderick Rob Brown, Brown. Was, uh, was providing the pressure off the edge. So it will be a fourth and six, and uh, Eskridge will drop into punt formation and will kind of quick kick this thing downfield. Nobody back. It's an end over and kick. Will it get to the end zone? It will not. It will be down at the one. Well, that worked well. Pretty good call by Scott Smith as uh, he retreats from the shotgun. Jamie into punt formation. You don't see the quick kick very often, but that worked pretty well for him. Yeah, and actually, Bill Rockwall will Patrick Chase Carlton, Andrew Bailey, John Landis, and Lynn Gibson getting the start tonight at tackle. Tyler Fleet and Michael Mason open in a double tight end set. Preston Hill, the quarterback, from the one. Hand off Jason Williams, and he moves it up to about the four-yard line before he's knocked off his pins after a gain of about three by Kyle Blackman. Jason Williams comes in tonight, 560 yards rushing. Nathan Tucker is the fullback. Uh, we'll see Jacob Amy and Jonathan Williams, Marcus Jackson, and a variety of wide receivers for Robert E. Lee. It'll be second down and about seven for the Red Raiders at their own four yards. And four yards a game, fourth in the district. They put Fleet in motion. And on a second down play, here comes the sweep. Williams looking for a hole, and it ain't there. He is knocked down for no gain on that play. Ryan Craven was among those in on the tackle that time, along with Rockwell's Bobby Taylor, a cornerback. Let's set their defense. D. Duncan and Kyle Blackman, Devin McDonald across the three-man front. Corey Randall, Cooper Elam, the nephew of former head coach Mark Elam, Justin Holdsworth, and Kendall Riley, the starting linebackers. Jamil Owens, Ryan Craven, Tyler Dodd, Bobby Taylor in the secondary. The Red Raiders facing a third and about seven and a half just inside their own four-yard line. No score, seven minutes left in the quarter. Preston Hill under center, the senior, fakes the handoff, wants to throw out of his own end zone, does. Upfield, it's caught at the 12-yard line and close to a first down by Michael Mason. That was a very gutsy call by Robert E. Lee coach Mike Owens and Dow Wynn and, uh, and Gary Fleet. That's a nine-yard gain, and that is just enough for a first down. Well, they run they run Mason out from the tight end position, Bill. They just run him out into the flat, and he uh, has man-to-man -man coverage. The linebacker's not over there in time, and Preston gets enough time from the big guys up front to deliver the pass and the initial first down on the evening for Lee. Marcus Jackson has checked into the ball game for the Red Raiders, and they do have a first down at the 12. They've still got a long way to go. Scoreless game. Handoff Williams looking outside. Squirts through the first tackler and picks up yardage to near the 16 before D. Duncan and Cooper Elam, the leading tackler on this team, make the stop after a gain of about four yards. It'll be second and six. And right now. One yard line, and the Red Raiders trying to dig out of there. Second down from the 16. Near side, the short side. They put fleet in motion, and the stretch play handoff to Williams. Cut back out to the 20, to the 21 yard line. About a yard short of the first down, Tyler Dodd in on the tackle, coming up from his safety spot with uh, Gibson and Landis teaming up on a nice seal block that time to give him room to run. C9 against Chaminade, Madonna, 126 against Waco, but a combined 168 in the last two ball games they need for him to get off tonight. Third and one, handoff to him. He looks like he's got the first down, it does. Bounced off a tackler for about four. Carlton 
with a pull block that time to give uh, Jonathan, uh, give Jason Williams a little running room that time, and that's enough for Robert E. Lee's second first down. Yeah, that's a senior. Came into tonight with a career rushing of about 1,300 yards, adding to it, and Robert E. Lee may be on the move here. Not a bad drive from their own one out to the 26. Five minutes to go. Play action. Hill steps up, hit, drop, sacked at the 21-yard line. Just did not have the time. They were blitzing off the edges that time. Justin Holdsworth, number 40, among the uh, orange-shirted tacklers and Dee Duncan, number 14, who nailed him for the uh, first sack of the night and a loss of about five yards. Well, that suffers a setback. Again, they've rooted their way out of the uh, shadow of their own end zone here on a beautiful uh, late September night and a handoff on second down. It's uh, Jason Williams to the outside. He gets a little bit of that back, but not much as the uh, Rockwall Yellow Jackets do a good job of tracking him down. Tyler Dobbs safe the second time he called his name tonight. He is a senior, and he knocks him down at about the 23-yard line. So Robert E. Lee gets maybe two yards of that back. It'll bring a third and 13. And now it's obvious passing situation. Then again, they may go to a delay or, or run some misdirection like they did earlier in the first part of the drive. Uh, but the, what Lee needs to do is keep the ball and keep momentum or gain the momentum that they have right now. Nathan Tucker goes out of the ball game. Lee goes one back. Two wide, split right. Tyler Fleet goes in motion against the 3-4. Hill, bootleg left, throws that little pass out to Fleet, caught at the 25, upfield to the 30 before he's knocked out of bounds short of the first down. The bad news, Robert E. Lee didn't get the first down. The good news is they did pick up two. They gained some field position, and they will punt instead of their own end zone. The ball advanced to the 30-yard line, and they'll have a little room for Preston Hill to punt. Cooper Elam on the tackle. Well, now they're going to have to uh, turn it over to the defense and see if they can stop Rockwall uh, further back down the field. And what this is, game is early initially has been a field position ball game. So and so it'll be... Preston Hill punting from his own 16-yard line. Not much of a rush this time. Preston with a line drive kick. And the ball will bounce twice and be picked up by uh, Rockwall's number 19 going out to the 30-yard line. Run out of bounds that time is Tyler Dodd, the safety. And a pretty good coverage downfield by Robert E. Lee chasing Chase Carlton that time to uh, bump him out along that Rockwall sideline. So the Yellow Jackets will get their second possession here from... Uh, Somewhere around the 30, well, i got to stop and think. It looks like about the 35 yard line. Is that right, Randy? I think so, yeah. Somewhere between the 30 and the 35, right at the 35 right, yard 35. line. And it'll be first down for Rockwall. 3.27 to go, first quarter, no score, Robert Ely and Rockwall. Rockwall on their first drive uh, went to the ground five times and then aired twice and completed one of the two for a first down. So let's look at if they open up the passing game now, Bill. Pretty good crowd here tonight from Tyler and a good crowd across the way here at uh, Wilkerson Sanders for the Rockwall Yellow Jackets. First down at the 35, draw play hand off Dabney and he moves the pile up to the 43 for a gain of eight. Kind of a little stutter step in the backfield, cost the Red Raiders. Roderick Brown wound up making the tackle. Two of them overran the play that time, or at least got faked out a little bit, if you will, but Dabney with a nice uh, nice job that time. Caught it a seven-yard gain. They actually mark his knee down at the 42. Well, they get a nice surge from the right side of their offensive line, led by Martin McGuire, their uh, 6'2", 250-pound guard on the right side, and Josh Tigger, 6'3", 260 senior. And Eskridge shotgun again, two wide to the left, one to the right. Farhash, late first quarter. Play action to Mathis. Eskridge will step up. He hit as he throws. The ball is tipped and almost intercepted. Intended that time for a their number 20, Andy Tanner, the district's leading receiver. And the ball was a little bit high, a little bit behind Tanner, but even at that, Randy, he almost pulled that thing down. He almost pulled off an acrobatic catch, falling backwards, he leaps up high and brings it in one hand, and the ball pops free. A couple Red Raiders in the vicinity, but they can't pick it off either. Mark Brotherton checks out of the game. Robert E. Lee with a uh, third and three defensively to worry about here for the uh, Rockwell Yellow Jackets. They go double slot, kind of a double tight end in a slot formation. The back is Mathis. They hand it to him, and he won't get it. Nice play off the edge for Robert E. Lee's defense. I think that was Roderick Brown again. No, Beard. And uh, Roderick Brown and number 10, Adrian Beard that time, teaming up to stop him for no gain on the play. I ah, caught it a half a yard. It'll be fourth down and two. And they look like they're going to set up to try to go for it now, Bill. This will be a key moment in the ballgame if Lee can hold them right here on big fourth down. Or do like they did a while ago and let uh, Eskridge Quick step hit, back right. and punt it again. Here he goes. And again, he doubles as their punter, although they do have another punter in Ricky Craven. Let's see what they decide to do here on a fourth and two. Now Eskridge looks at the sideline. I'm still not sure what he's going to do. He's going to call timeout. We'll take it with him. 2.04 to go in the first quarter. We're scoreless, and we're back in one minute.
Scoreless first quarter here. It's fourth and two, and now Eskridge, after the timeout, will retreat. Punt from about 10 yards back, and this is a high, high kick. That will be fair caught by the Red Raiders at the uh, 21 yard line. Jonathan Williams, the deep guy for the Red Raiders. And so Robert E. Lee will start their second possession from about the 21 yard line. Let's go down to Jamie Lynn. Jamie, uh, the, uh, uh, Gary Fleet uh, having a little uh, session with his offensive lineman, huh? Yeah, it didn't look like the Red Raiders were uh, clicking in that first possession there, Bill, although they did pick up the uh, two first downs, but unhappy with his offensive line, thought they were playing two passive on that first possession and wanted them to attack, attack on every single play. Well, and so now they'll get a chance with a little bit better position to attack from, from their own 21 yard line after starting their first possession from their own one. Preston Hill under center, he sends two receivers to the left and now Jason Williams goes in motion. The inside handoff coming this way and it's a little bit of running room that time for uh, Robert E. Uh, Tyler Dodd uh, makes the uh, uh, makes the tackle on Robert E. Lee. It's, uh, so you carried the ball that time. I don't think that was Nathan uh, Tucker. Nathan Tucker, yeah, number 29, Nathan Tucker, the fullback. Rare carry for Nathan. That's only his 20th carry of the year, but uh, that was a pretty good looking play because it nets him about five and a half, maybe six yards. Marcus Jackson is in the ball game, and he'll go wide to the left side along with Jacob Amy out there. This time they go with uh, uh, Jason Williams in the backfield, and Fleet goes in motion left to right. And the handoff, here's Jason upfield with a hole. He's got room out to the 40, grinding to the 45, out to the 47. A big run for Jason Williams, his best of the night, and it's a first down, Robert E. Lee. In fact, it took a touchdown saving tackle for Bobby Taylor, or Williams just might go the distance that time. He cuts back inside, Bill, and finds his hole right behind the left side of the line. And he cuts back to the inside across the grain. It picks up a nice big first down gain. Now, I've got him for seven carries and 38 yards after that 22 yard. Jake Kirkpatrick and Chase Carlson making nice blocks. Kirkpatrick, the former Grace Cougar, who transferred to Robert E. Lee. And uh, his first year of football, he's starting. Here's a first down handoff. This time, they hand it to Williams, and he's mashed by the nose tackle, Kyle Blackman, at the line of scrimmage. Give Blackman credit. He's 6'1", 225, and Williams is every bit the man that he is. And those two guys met head on at that time. Blackman had a head of steam, and he knocks Jason down for no gain on that play. Yeah, great job by the front interior for Rockwall. They're, they're pitching in, Bill, and uh, they cut inside on that play and just get past the, the attempted block and meet Williams head on for no gain. So it'll be second down, Robert E. Lee. Late first quarter, 20 seconds left to go. No score here at Rockwall. Two receivers stacked to the left side, which is the short side of the field. Hill back to pass, throws a bullet downfield. Jason Williams at the 30 and ran over over a Rockwall Yellow Jacket with 9.1 to go in the first quarter. That's a passing play to Jason Williams out of the backfield in the first down for the Red Raiders. And they find him and he just swing him out to the far side and uh, he finds uh, an open path in a zone defense set up by Rockwall and Preston has plenty of time to throw as his line protects him and he threads the needle for a big, big gain down 25 yards, Bill. To the 29 and that will be the final play of the first quarter. We're scoreless here at Rockwall. Robert Ely and Rockwall tied 0-0 after one quarter. We're back in one minute. Bill Coates in for David Smoke tonight here in Robert E. Lee football broadcast on News Talk 600 KTBV. David away from the mic tonight. Uh, we're in the second quarter. Randy Johnson, Jamie Lynn, Terry Ainsworth, Michael Rue, Justin Brinker all on hand. I'm the only newcomer on this crew tonight. It's scoreless as we start the second quarter as Rockwald and Robert E. Lee are playing scoreless football, but Lee is threatening right now. They've moved the ball to the 29-yard line. It's a first down. The Red Raiders go right to left here in the second. They sit Amy in a tight left slot formation, hand the ball off to Nathan Tucker, and Tucker grinds to the left side. Tyler Dodd makes the tackle near the 26-yard line, almost a face mask as Dodd reached up and grabbed him around the base of the helmet and throws him down. It'll be a gain of about, uh, call it three and a half yards, and make it second down for the Red Raiders near the 26-yard line. Just underway again. Rockwall drove into Robert E. Lee territory on their first drive, and then they punted the ball to the one. Robert E. Lee drove out to the 30, had to punt, got the ball back, and on their second possession, here they are. Jonathan Marcus Jackson is into the ball game. It's second down at about six and a half near the 26. Fleet sets up, motion, handoff. They give the ball to Jason Williams, and look out to the 10, five, gone, touchdown, Robert E. Lee. 
Jason Williams got free, and he blasts 26 yards, and Robert Ely draws first blood. Yeah, he just took it to the left side. The flow went right, Bill. He found a hole off the left guard and left tackle. They did a great job up front for Robert Ely with a nice push up front. Credit, credit Jake Kirkpatrick and Chase Carlton for opening a nice hole, and he dances out of one attempt to tackle into the end zone for six for the Red Raiders. And Tyler Fleet going in motion. Jamie, go ahead. As the extra point is on the way by Robert Ely's Joseph Cleaver, and it barely clears, but it does. Jamie, we'll get your thought here in a moment. 11-12 to go in the second. Robert Ely, seven. Rockwall, nothing. Back in one minute. This is at Wilkerson Sanders Stadium, where the Robert Ely Red, Red Raiders have taken a seven to nothing lead on the Rockwall Yellow Jackets. Six plays, 79 yards, and two minutes and 33 seconds for the Red Raiders. Jason Williams caps it off with a 26-yard run. Coachy. That was a great run. Jamie, what do you have to say about that? Well, a terrific run, Bill, and an awesome stiff arm right at the line of scrimmage by Jason Williams, knocked a defender away. And that was no small defender. That was number six, 56, James Repka, who goes 6'1", 240. And Williams knocked him away with just one arm. Craven and Dabney are back deep for Rockwall as the Red Raiders Tee it up to kick it off. Second time tonight they've done that. Taylor Matlock uh, has it teed up, kicks it off. It's one of those high short pop-ups that will be fair caught at the 32-yard line by the uh, Rockwall Yellow Jackets, uh, number four, Kenneth Lawrence. So pretty good starting field position for Rockwall. And they will go left to right here with their uh, first possession of the second quarter. Robert E. Lee up seven to nothing. Mark Brotherton coming in and out of the game. He's logging a lot of playing time tonight. Seeing uh, uh, Colby Ray, Jacoby McKenzie, Rod Brown, Mario Trimble. Uh, we're seeing a whole Taj Lee, Jason Rule will all play a lot as Robert E. Lee tries to keep fresh players out there. 11-11 to go here in the second quarter at Wilkerson Sanders. Robert E. Lee's second ever meeting with Rockwall. They beat him last year 41-7. This is their first ever trip to Rockwall. Eskridge, shotgun. Two receivers left, one right, one set back. He goes back to pass. He's hit the backfield, manages to get free to the 35 40. He's upfield and has the first down ridden out of bounds at the 46 yard line by Robert E. Lee's number 44, Michael Wall. How he got past Roderick Brown is amazing. Randy, because I thought Brown had him decked to the back. Well, the way it appeared that Rod, Rod Brown was was kind of in shock that it was so easy to get to the quarterback, and he, he had him wrapped up. He just flung him free, a little bit bigger body, and he rolls out of it and picks up the first down for Rockwall. Carlo Lawler has checked in. He's playing on the outside now. First down Rockwall at the 45-yard line following Eskridge. Nice run out of trouble. Two receivers left. Inside handoff. This is Mar uh, Dabney. Dabney cuts outside, bounces off one tackle, and then Cuba buries him at the 48-yard line. The 6'2 junior uh, lays a pretty good lick on him after about a two-and-a-half-yard gain. And it'll be second down and about seven coming up for the Yellow Jackets. Well, Lee did a better job of containment on that play, Bill, and uh, they just wrapped up the running back, and Dabby turned and tried his best to get it open in the free, and he could not do so as a three or four white shirts are there to greet him. And so it'll be... Robert E. Lee's friend and before Daniel De La Cruz has checked into the ball game. Mario Trimble is also in there for Robert E. Lee as they use a number of different players. Second down, handoff inside Mathis, and Mathis won't get much. He gets to the 50, uh, but the Red Raider uh, who wrapped him up that time after a very short game was Carl Lawler. He is a 6'1 senior. That's his sixth tackle of the year, and it'll set up a, a third down and five. Yeah, and a pretty big third down is uh, Rockwall is right at midfield, right directly in front of our viewpoint up here and uh, Lee has a good chance to get a stop and get the ball back in relatively good field position. It's been a fast-moving first half so far. Neither team throwing a lot. Uh, even though Rockwall wants to throw a lot, they've run it a lot tonight, more than I expected really so far. First down, uh, third down and five at the 50-yard line. Far side, the short side. They fake the handoff, and now Eskridge rolls out. He's being chased. He throws. He finds Dabney. Dabney does not have the first down. He had it, then a penalty flag flies. He had it and appeared to actually come back to the ball, lose a little bit of ground, and the tackle made by Adrian Veer. There is a penalty flag down, and, and we think it might be face mask. Jamie, what do you think? That's exactly right. Face mask against Robert E. Lee, probably just a five-yard variety. They did let go, but that will be enough for the first down. And that will move it down to about the 40-yard line. So uh, after a pretty good open field tackle that time by the Red Raiders' Adrian Beard, the uh, – Ball moved downfield, and I think that's going to be more like the 15-yard variety, Jamie, huh? And that's kind of surprising. He did let go, but, uh, you know, that's a, a judgment by the official. 
Well, so now Rockwall challenges Lee's into the field. We'll give you a station ID here in just a moment as uh, they declare the ball ready for play. It's first down for Rockwall at the Lee 30-yard line. Moving left to right here in the second quarter in their orange uniforms, pants, jerseys, and hats with uh, white numerals. Uh, Eskridge, the senior, 6-3. A Division I prospect stands there with two backs left and right. Fakes the handoff to one of them. Eskridge will throw the ball downfield. It's off Tanner, and it goes incomplete. Tanner, that time after a near circus catch earlier, let that ball bounce right off his hands. Incomplete. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification as you listen to Robert E. Lee High School football. Jamie Lent, Kerry Ainsworth, Mike Rue here in Rockwall. It's 7-0 Red Raiders leading Rockwall, second quarter but it's second and 10 for the Yellow Jackets at the Lee 30-yard line, moving the ball. Eskridge straight drop. He throws a little middle screen. That's Dabney, and Dabney squirting downfield to the 21-yard line for a gain right at nine yards. That's a tough play to defend because Dabney is quick enough, and all you have to do is basically kind of get lost for Andy in the shuffle among all those bodies out there. The quarterback can see you. You got a chance to make a play out yeah, of that. Yeah. George Faber made the tackle for the Red A little Raiders. bubble screen. He comes back inside, makes the catch, and finds his blockers and gets inside and does a great job. He has all three pass receptions thus far in the game from quarterback Esther. Scoreboard says an eight-yard game, third and two. But he does move the ball to the Robert E. Lee 22-yard line. And uh, the Red Raiders chasing the ball all over the field that time. Far side of the short side. Two receivers left, one right. One running back. It's Dabney. Shotgun snap to Eskridge. He hands the ball to Dabney. Looking right. Cuts inside to the 15. Cuts back to the 10. To the 5. And he's gone. That's a touchdown. That's a touchdown. And that's a 21-yard touchdown run by Tony Dabney of the Rockwall Yellow Jackets. Yeah, he found a nice hole inside. Nobody was at home to contain him for Lee. He gets in behind his right guard, Aguirre, who pushes out on the defensive tackle in front of him and uh, finds a hole and breaks into the 3 for 6 for the Yellow Jackets. A couple of missed tackles there. And the Red Raiders, who had a problem with that, I'm told, this year, uh, let one get away that time. And now uh, Andy Tanner, the left-footed kicker, will look to add the extra point to tie, and he does. With 8.04 to go in the second, new ball game. Lee 7, Rockwall 7. We're back in one minute. A left-footed kicker will uh, tee this ball up and uh, beat it down. He'll check that Ryan Craven. Craven, who doubles as a defensive back, is the kickoff guy. Tanner handles the extra points and field goal. By the way, uh, they had another kicker, Jonah Longino, is apparently injured. Uh, he had a 45-yarder earlier this year. It was Tanner eight days ago who missed a 28-yarder that would have won it in regulation against Bourne High School. This time, Craven kicks off. It's a nice deep kick. It will take Bork into the end zone, and he'll pick it up and wisely take a knee. So Robert E. Lee will start first down at 10. And fellas, I think they're in a ball game tonight after uh, Jason Williams made that one touchdown look easy. Rockwall counter punches Randy, and uh, yeah, that's that's a pretty impressive drive. Yeah, do. very impressively. They do it through the air and through the ground, and Eskridge got it going with that nice 13-yard run after he was uh, appeared to be sacked deep in his own uh, backfield, but he broke away, and that started a, a nice drive for the Yellow Jackets. And so Robert E. Lee will uh, take over their own 20-yard line. Preston Hill so far this year uh, coming into this game, 43 of 64, four interceptions, four touchdowns, and uh, trying to get this Robert E. Lee offense kick-started here tonight, and he hands the ball off to Williams, and he picks up three and a half at right tackle. As he bounces off a couple of guys and winds up getting yardage before 39, Trevor Norris, a backup linebacker, makes the tackle with a bounce to the three-yard line, so Robert E. Lee will face the second down. Uh, Landis, uh, who has moved to guard tonight, with Lynn Gibson moving over to tackle a lot this evening, uh, making a nice block to give Williams a little running room. So it'll be second down. 7.35 left to play. Justin Brinker coming up at halftime with a scoreboard update. Back at our News Talk 600 KTVD studio. Far hash, three-man line, two stand-up uh, linebackers. Hill with a play-action thing. He has to roll out. Remember, Preston can run and will. Up the field to the 28-yard line before he's knocked down about two yards short of the first down. As Preston Hill picks up yardage, about four on that carry. Trevor Norris again on the tackle. So Robert E. Lee for third down. Into it. Yeah, it looked like he was going to go back to pass, and he just decided to tuck it under and pretty, pretty much a designed rollout run. And uh, his receivers, uh, two on the right side, were both covered. Nice bit of coverage for Rockwall's defense, and Preston has to tuck it and run. Michael Mason's in, double tight ends. Fleet and Mason. Lee really at about a third and about a yard and a half. They actually had the ball spotted just shy of the 29. So the Red Raiders need to gain just over a yard. Well, it's almost like a goal line setup here. They got eight, nine guys in the box, and they hand off the hammer, Williams and Jason. 
bounces upfield to the 30 and a half, if you will, and I think has the first down. Didn't get him by much, but uh, that's okay. They get a fresh set of downs, and Robert E. Lee keeps the chains moving, which uh, any coach will tell you, that's music to their ears. That's the main the thing. Yeah, that's right, Bill, and what they would like to have here is a good five or six minute drive with points uh, to put themselves in the lead to go into halftime momentum. You don't want to, can't afford a mistake here with the ball in your own end of the field. Now, Tucker and Jackson are in the game. Marcus also doubles as Robert E. Lee's backup quarterback and has played a little bit there this year. Probable starter next year. This year playing a lot at wide receiver and splits to the right side. Red Raiders go right to left. Bootleg again. Hill steps up. He's looking a little bit deeper downfield and he finds Tyler Fleet. Fleet to the 50 and a first down to the 48 yard line. That's Michael Mason. Check that Michael Mason with the catch and the run. So they spread the wealth around. And Robert E. Lee's other tight end, Michael Mason, the senior, picks up 21 and a Red Raider first down at the 49 yard line. Yeah, another well designed play as they float out the end, running from a slot position, Bill, and he just takes off to the right side, uncovered along the far sideline, the home sideline. And uh, his quarterback, Preston Hill, is now 4 4 in the ballgame. Bill, so, that's a terrific job by Preston Hill of uh, looking off the defensive back, looking left the whole time, and then turns back to the right to find his receiver. Preston quick up to the line of scrimmage, hands off stretch play. Here's Williams downfield to the 40. 35 breaks, two tackles, and finally run out of bounds along the near sideline at the 28 yard line. Jake Kirkpatrick springs him to the outside for a big gain of 21 more, and Robert E. Lee has picked up 42 yards in two plays, and they're deep in uh, deep in uh, Rockwall territory at the 28. It's coming in big chunks, and uh, you can cover 40 yards plus in two plays. That that really is a good, good thing for your coaching staff and confidence boosting for your offensive team as well. When you can run, that opens everything else oh, yeah. up. Boy, Lee's had a great history in the last 10 years under Michael with the fine running backs. And they've got another good one here in uh, Jason Williams. He stays in the backfield. Fleet goes in motion. Tucker in a slot. Inside handoff to Nathan. And Nathan down to the 25 for a gain of three as Holsworth makes the rock wall tackle. 5.35 to go. Lee picks up three. It'll be second down and about seven. And when they like to go with a changeup, they'll use Tucker. That's his third carry this far of the ball game, Bill. And uh, he's had positive yardage on every play. That's the shortest thus far of his three carries. Looks like a little bit of wind working. Uh, again, coming out of the south, the American and Texas flags at the south end of the stadium. Uh, as it appears there's a, there's a breeze blowing against Robert E. Lee here uh, as they play second and seven at the 25. Near hash, play action. Hill's in a little bit of trouble. He has to scramble out of the pocket. He's running for the near side, and he's going to get back to the 20. Six. He'll lose a yard and lucky to get that much of it back because he was surrounded that time by Tyler Dodd uh, and number 65, Russ Goins. So uh, he gets part of that back. It'll still be third down and about eight for the Red Raiders at the 26 yard line. Yeah, they want to keep the possession going. They're probably in four down territory, seeing as this might be a little bit out of range for uh, any of the lead kickers. Let's see what they get on third down to see if that sets up a potential fourth down play, Bill. Cruz Fry has checked into the ball game for Robert E. Lee as a, an extra wide receiver blocker, and he lines up uh, wide to the uh, right side. In fact, they put three receivers in a, in a diamond look over there. Snap the ball, roll out. Now he'll throws the deep ball downfield. He's got a man wide open. It's a touchdown for Robert E. Lee, Jonathan Williams. He looked right and then found Williams wide open, streaking to the post down the left hash, and the Red Raiders score the touchdown. It's a 27-yard strike from Hill to Williams. And give credit to all the offensive line. They protect the quarterback, give him ample time to look. He, he checked through all of his reads, and the third one, he found, he found Williams streaking across the middle, blowing past two orange-shirted jackets for the touchdown and the pass. And here comes the extra point by Robert E. Lee, is number 30. Kick is on the way, and it is good by Joe Cleaver, and the Red Raiders lead it 14 to seven with 4.52 to go in the second. We're back in one minute. Let me have that thing off. That's, that's take three, it's a touchdown. Okay. Nine, eight, okay. Chase, Justin. All right. Welcome back to Rockwall, Texas at Wilkerson Sanders Stadium. I'm Randy Johnson with your scoring summary for Robert E. Lee. Eight plays and 80 yards in three minutes and 12 seconds. 27-yard touchdown pass. Jonathan Williams on the receiving end from a very sharp and crisp Preston Hill. I'll tell you what. Uh, they, uh, uh, oops, sorry. It's hard to get you. When you've done 166 in a row, it's hard to get you. 118 with him by myself. 
so I'll, I'll, I'll catch the flag Thank on that. That'll be the last one. Uh, 42 yards in two plays, too. Nice run by Williams, and then a nice pass downfield. And the kick is a short one again, and it's fumbled at the 30-yard line, and the Robert E. Lee Red Raiders think they have it. That ball bounced off one of the receivers, one of the up guys, and upfield about 10 yards. Robert, and Robert E. Lee's got Lee. number 57, Ryan McSwain on the recovery for the Red Raiders. How about Robert E. Lee with a chance to do some damage here, Jamie? Ryan McSwain was all over that ball, and he got a great bounce too, didn't he? Well, and that's why you go to the pooch kick. You end up getting a guy like number 47, Kyle Blackman, who's listed as a nose guard trying to carry the ball. That one goes off his chest, off his knee, and takes a perfect bounce to the Red Raiders. And they have it at the 33 yard line. That's the first turnover of the night for either team. That's right. It's, it's a huge one. Oh, yeah. Are potentially huge with 4.45 to go here in the second. Lee up 14 to 7. Lead in the ball at the Rockwall 33. Here's the handoff. Williams goes for the jugular, but they knock it down off his sticks at the 31 yard line and right tackle. He is uh, knocked off his feet after a block by Lynn Gibson. By, Lynn, by D. Duncan, the uh, defensive end. So that's a gain of about two on the play, second down and eight. Now, right now is the time that the lead coaching staff, uh, Mike Owens and company, want to really take time off the clock and burn it on out and get these last 31 yards into the end zone in the next five or six plays. Touchdown here would be huge. Indeed, it would. Debilitating for Rockwell. Could be. Yep. Lee up by a touchdown with a lead in the ball, and a whistle blows, and illegal procedure coming up, I think, against Robert Lee. This has been a relatively penalty free ball game, guys, so far. It's two for Lee now and one for Rockwall. All together, Lee had the personal foul moments ago on a face mask. That's two for them for 20, and Rockwall one for five. And they lose the ball back to the 36 yard line, so now instead of a uh, second down 13, which is a little bit tough to call. Uh, timeout wise, Lee has all three of theirs left. Uh, that matters much at this point. Jacob Amy comes uh, wide to the near side along with Marcus Jackson. And on the second and 13, Williams, the lone setback. They fake to him, throw the ball near side. Here's big Jacob, Amy at the 30. What a move to the 25 yard line. Amy fighting forward to the 23. And uh, that's pretty close to a first down. He may be a little bit short, although after that second and third effort that he gave, and he must have gotten the last five yard of Dragon Tacklers, he picks up 12. It'll be third and one for Robert E. Lee. But that's a pretty simple looking pass, and Amy made that thing look really, really good. Yeah, he did, and he, he got great separation once he caught the ball, and he really came of age uh, two weeks ago in the game against Trinity where he had five receptions. Uh, his Really his first big game of his career, and he was the player of the game. Preston Hill limping off the field at the end of that play. And, Yes, sir. He's Marcus Jackson in. Uh, Marcus Jackson is in. Jamie, uh, take a look at Preston. Is he favoring his right ankle? Is that right? Hard to tell as Jamie makes his way up the sideline, but Preston will take a break. It's third and one. Marcus Jackson's in there. The handoff to Williams, and Williams has the first down. Left tackle to the 30-yard line. Make that to the 20. He plows downfield. Holdsworth on the tackle. Left side, Bailey Carlton, Kirkpatrick uh, teaming up to block for him. So they do get the first down, and Hill is being attended to along the near sideline, uh, down just below us. That's one of those things that, uh, you know, when your quarterback limps off the field, even under his own power, you kind of hold your breath. And Preston certainly has had a nice season so far. Marcus Jackson, the junior, is in there. And he puts Tyler Fleet in motion. Red Raider machine, hopefully, to keep rolling here. But penalty flags blow this play dead before the snap of the football. And as you so often see, guys, when you get a new quarterback in there, the rhythm changes, everything about it changes. Robert E. Lee guilty of five yards. Yeah, that's another one. That, that can be costly, but uh, fortunately it's just first down. Preston Hill, Bill, is six of six thus far in the ball game for 103 yards in the touchdown as he comes to the sideline uh, uh, with, a, with an unknown injury. So while they tend to him, Marcus Jackson has him at the line of scrimmage at the 25, first and 15. Fleet goes in motion near hash. Red Raiders go right to left. Fake the handoff. Jackson on the rollout. Dump it downfield. He finds Fleet caught at the 20, and he's run out of bounds at around 16-yard line. That was a very nice little bootleg by Marcus Jackson to Tyler Fleet, and that's a gain, not enough for a first down, but certainly enough to give Robert E. Lee a little work, a little, little operating room. Uh, it'll, be third, it'll be third down and six for the Red Raiders. Well, and Marcus Jackson, Bill, is a fantastic athlete. Uh, he's much, much faster to press him. He obviously doesn't have the experience or the arm, uh, but he's very uh, uncanny and very smart, and he finds his receiver in the flat and Fleet. I'm at second and six for Robert E. Lee at the 16-yard line. 
Jackson near hand. Puts Williams in motion this time. Tucker in the backfield. And they hand the ball off to Jason. Jason's hit at the line of scrimmage. And falls forward. Tyler Dodd was there to get it. But his momentum didn't carry him to the 15 yard line. Craven. Check that Craven out on the tackle. Robert Lee plays third down about five. Yeah, he cuts back on the, on the misdirection. They run him from the left side to right, and he just turns right in, and uh, Craven is there to greet him, and two other red, uh, pardon me, orange shirts are there to wrap him up. So it's third and five for the Red Raiders. Tucker stays in. Jonathan Williams comes in. Marcus Fuller's in. Jacob Amy's in. A number of Red Raiders, including Cruz Fly, come out of the ball game. And now Robert E. Lee with their third down and five. They're at the 15-yard line. 2.25 left to play in the second quarter. Following the fumble kickoff by Rockwall, Lee threatens Jackson back to pass. He throws, finds a screen pass, Tucker to the 10, first and goal, Tucker to the two-yard line, and threatens the Rockwall end zone, doesn't get there, but he does get Lee a first down, and goal to go. Yeah, that's just great execution. Uh, even the new quarterback in notwithstanding, he shows his athleticism, getting away from uh, Rush from three or four orange shirts coming after him. He finds the screen outlet to the right side, and Tucker, who makes a catch and gets it first and goal for Robert E. Lee. What a big touchdown drive this would be, especially after the injury to Preston Hill and Marcus Jackson could lead these guys on into the end zone here. It is a first and goal at the two, far side to short side. Power eye backfield, handoff. Jason Williams trying to go over the top and left tackle, not quite able to penetrate that time. He has seven touchdowns this year, looking for number eight, and uh, he'll have to wait at least another turn. Pretty good surge that time. Another rock ball defensive line, second and go. Yeah, they get a good push up front. They don't allow Lee to, to do the same, and uh, they bottle up Jason as he tries to get open coverage. I've got him unofficially 16 carries for 97 yards, so Lee has over 100 yards of passing and right at 100 yards of rushing for the evening thus far in the ballgame. Great balance. They send a receiver out wide to the near side. And a second and goal at the one yard line. Power eye again, here's the pitch. Jason Williams cut back, he's hit though, and denied the end zone. As the uh, Rockwall Yellow Jackets, D. Duncan and Cooper Ehler, kind of moving down that line of scrimmage, Jamie did a heck of a job that time, and that's actually a loss of a half yard. Well, they spread that out nicely. Jason tried to come back inside, but that was right to the teeth of the defense. Nice job by Rockwell. Ball now sitting outside the two-yard line as he loses about a yard that time. Less than a minute to go in the second quarter, and Robert E. Lee does not want to waste this fine opportunity here. They send Michael Fuller out wide to the left side, and here's third and goal from the two. One back this time, handoff. Jason Williams hit, dies for the end zone, is not there. He is hit in the backfield, falls forward to the half-yard line. Lee has three timeouts left. It'll be fourth and goal, and the Red Raiders will call a timeout at some point here with 22 seconds left to play, just inches away from the goal line. The fans screaming, go for it, go for it. Mike Owens and his guys will call the timeout here uh, at the very last instant to talk this thing over and then decide what to do. It's 14-7, Robert E. Lee leading Rockwall. 11 seconds left to play before halftime. We're back in 30 seconds. You either powered up up the middle with Jason or you do a quarterback sneak and uh, Jamie's got something to do, Jamie. Jamie, how close are you? Well, they are inside the one yard line, Bill. I'd say about the three quarter yard line. Uh, like you said, obviously Jason Williams is a terrific runner in short yardage situations, but you also love the option of the speed of quarterback Marcus Jackson trying to get to the outside, maybe on a bootleg. Robert E. Lee threatening the goal line. It's fourth and inches. Michael Fuller splits wide to the left side. Cruz Fry goes wide right. Williams, the long setback. Tight end Fleet is lined up right at the goal line. Jackson takes the snap. Marcus to the end zone. Did he get there? They say he did not. And Rockwall holds with 7.8 seconds left to play. Quarterback sneak by junior Marcus Jackson fails to penetrate. No play, Bill. Timeout time was called before the play by Rockwall. Oh, my goodness. Rockwall called timeout. Oh, my. Lee's going to get a chance to do this again. Holy cow. What an unfortunate error, uh, error for the Yellow Jackets <laughs> as they were unhappy with their defensive alignment. The Red Raiders kind of rushed to the line of scrimmage. They weren't happy with what they saw. They take the timeout just before the snap, and we end up catching a huge break there. Boy, I tell you what, that's one of those uh, 
No, 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 no. Yes, yes. Play too so, late. And, and so they'll get at least some line yeah. that they really didn't create, but here they are. And maybe we'll talk about this in the fourth quarter. If Lee should counter and score with this extra opportunity, you know, it could be the difference in the, <laughs> a real close game, you know. All right, so the Rockwell defense just thought they'd done their job. They were jumping up and down. They have to come back out again. Well, the clock still reads 7.8. If there was no play, they need to put that back up at 11.8. Well, I don't know that they're going to do that. Looks like, well, now they're going to back away, and, and you may be right, Jamie. They may tell these guys. At four, uh, seconds, yeah, four seconds. All right, here's something funny, guys. The ball now sitting at the one-yard line. Lee's lost about a quarter of a yard in that little altercation. There. <laughs> okay. So they're going to get a fifth down, really. <laughs> they lost the yardage on four. So, okay, they, they gave them the line of scrimmage that they lost on a play that wasn't supposed to count, right, because they called timeout. So they actually Lee loses about eight inches. A play that should never happen in the first place. About 24 inches or something like that, but it's now they got it a minute 18. So now they got the 11.8 back. Yeah, yeah, 11. Well, that's an okay. We're talking minute 18. Guys, an update on uh, quarterback Preston Hill. They were kind of poking around at the right ankle and the right knee. Preston did get up and jog around a little bit, just wincing, and obviously a, a little bit of pain there. But uh, we'll see if he's able to come back out in the second half. But uh, so far, Marcus Jackson, the junior, getting his first chance for extended playing time, and he's two of two in there. So. Uh, Here's Robert E. Lee, fourth and goal inside the one-yard line, and here's the snap. Fuller pitches. Jason Wick. No, he keeps it himself, and he's going to die for the end zone touchdown. Oh, what a fake. Flag. What a nice flag. What a nice play by Marcus. Marcus Jackson, he fakes the ball to Williams and bootlegs. There is a flag down though, Jamie, for this touchdown stand. Yeah, and the flag sitting right here at the four yard line on the side of the field that Marcus Jackson ran for the touchdown. Saw the great speed there, but it uh, looks like maybe he got a little bit of extra help. Okay. So he ran for the pile on and made it, but it won't count. It's going to be holding, and Robert Ely probably at this point should go for points. Go for the points. Just take the field. Uh, to get that close and to have that many things go wrong. Uh, Robert E. Lee had some problems down there. Then they got a break when uh, Rockwall called timeout to play where they stopped the Red Raiders. But that holding penalty will set Robert E. Lee back to the 12. So add the 7 and tee it up somewhere around the 19-yard line. And that's where uh, Joseph Cleaver will attempt a 29-yard field goal. The holder is Matt Mullins. In the near hash, the Red Raiders could still be happy with a 10-point halftime lead. The snap's high, and the ball is bobbled. Mullins trying to get rid of it. It is blocked, and they botch that one completely, and they'll go to halftime, leading by only seven. High snap, Mullins not able to put it down. He tried to pull it up, run with it, and he tried to throw it. It was blocked, and the Red Raiders botch an opportunity after a fumbled kickoff to uh, get points and they lead by seven at halftime. Let's go down to Jamie Lynch. No, Coach, you get inside the five-yard line there and don't come away with points. How disappointing is that? Well, it's real disappointing. I mean, we got to be scored, but uh, we get a dead gun holding penalty. We can't have it. I mean, that's all it's to This is ridiculous. Rockwell's a team uh, known for their passing attack and the spread offense. Surprised to see them running so much in the first half. No, they, they do that. They, that's what they're doing. In the last game, I saw them in both films. They tried to run a little inside zone. And, do you guys try to change anything up defensively? Well, they, they make, make a few changes, but I think we'll hey, we just need to make some play. I mean, we're missing tackles and everything else. That's our biggest problem right now. We're not making any tackles. Thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Rockwall hasn't been a playoff team since 1994. That's a long, long drought. Robert E. Lee, of course, has been a playoff team in all but one of Mike Owen's previous nine years. This is his 10th season. He has 80 wins as the Robert E. Lee head coach, 90 at Port Arthur uh, Jefferson before that, 170 career victories. 171 would make him feel awfully good tonight, Randy, because that would start off district play. And I got a feeling this district, other than Longview, is going to be pretty balanced. Yeah, it should be, and it could be a dogfight every week for Lee. And, uh, and they're having a little adversity thrown their way here to start the second half. And uh, this first drive could be very important if they can take it down and cash it in early. And that's put a lot of pressure on Rockwall. Craven will kick off. It is a high end over end kick into the uh, Rockwall evening, taken by Bork at the two. Upfield at the 10. 
going to the right to the 15. He's at the 20 and upended at about the 20-yard line, and there's a penalty flag down, as there so often is on these kick returns, which may well be against Robert E. Lee, which would set the Red Raiders back. And Marcus Jackson would then have to start his second drive of the night. Remember, he took over when Preston went down on that final drive of the first half. This would be his second drive, and he would have to start that if, indeed, this is against Robert E. Lee. It's somewhere around the 10-yard line. And uh, it would uh, certainly be a long way to go for the Red Raiders. So Josh Burke returns that out to about the 22-yard line, but again, there's a flag down. The Red Raiders will be penalized all the way back inside the 10-yard line. They're going to mark this ball down at the 7. So Robert E. Lee will have it first and 10 at their own seven-yard line. Remember, they started their first drive of the game at their own one and managed to root it out of there to the 30 before punting. And that turned out to be a, a nice drive, even though they didn't get anything out of it. It got them out of the shadow of their own end zone and then allowed them later to get field position. First down for the Red Raiders at their own seven. Here's the handoff to Jason Williams. Got a chance, got a feeling Jason's going to be a busy boy in the second half. And he takes it outside and bangs up field to the 12 or the 13-yard line before he's knocked down by Justin Holdsworth. Uh, yeah, if Jason Williams, you, you got to ride that big horse in yeah. this situation. You got to give it to well, him a lot. I mentioned it to half. you during the last break that I bet we see him carry the ball 30 to 40 times tonight, and then uh, that's his 18th carry of the game as we start here early in the second half. And that's a gain of six on that first down carry. So it'll be second down at about four. Red Raiders at their own uh, at their own 13-yard line. It'll be Robert E. Lee with the football. And a whistle blows at the line of scrimmage, and they tried to hand it off to Jason Williams again. Penalty flags fly, and it'll be uh, first flag. Check that the second flag of the second half. This one will be against Robert E. Lee. Again, when you change quarterbacks, there's a whole new cadence that the guys have to get used to, and everything about his rhythm, uh, the guys up front have to uh, have to adjust to that. It's kind of tough to do it. Now. Well, sure it is, and uh, you know that's their second uh, procedure call of the evening. There's six penalty now against Lee for 40 and two right off the bat to start the second half. Uh, they need to right the ship, if you will, right here and uh, at least maintain possession on this drive. Second and nine, that moves the ball back to the eight-yard line. Near side, the short side, slot left, one back. Fleet in motion, two receivers split right, and again the penalty flag flies. And right now the Red Raiders are having a little trouble lining up. Movement along that offensive front. All that is serving to do is get the rock wall crowd jacked up get the rock wall defense jacked up. It's half the distance to the goal. And now, Randy, it's at the four yard line. Yeah, this is a very, very precarious situation for Robert E. Lee at the present. They, they really need to have a big play come out of this. Uh, but they're, they've shot themselves in the foot now uh, two two times in a row before the snap ever got. And again, will that missed opportunity at the end of the second quarter come back to haunt them? So now it becomes a second down and a bunch. Roll out, Jackson in his own end zone. Almost sack for a safety. Throws it upfield to Amy, caught at the 12. Jacob Amy bails Marcus Jackson out that time. Jackson was in trouble back there. Throwing that ball off the wrong foot, but he does get it upfield to Jacob Amy, who made a heads up play to come back to it. They picked up seven. Now they're still a ways away from the first down, but that could have been disastrous for Robert E. Lynn. Yeah, but fortunately, he's able to get away from the tackler in the middle of the end zone and shrugs him off and then finds his receiver over the uh, on the near hash mark here on the visitor side and makes the connection to Amy for his second catch of the night. All right, third and six, and that's a makeable play. They send Amy out wide to the right side along with Jonathan Williams. Near side, the short side, slot right, fake the handoff. Jackson back to pass, throws a bullet upfield. It's caught by Williams at the 20, 25, 30, 35 yard line. Dragon tacklers to the 37, goes Jonathan Williams. And that's a Robert E. Lee first down. And what a heady play by the junior Marcus Jackson and the Red Raiders have new life. And even though they, they had a little adversity there with the two straight penalties, they're able to come through it in the offensive line makes a, a little bit of amends, if you will, protecting the quarterback, and he rifles one to the right flat where he finds Williams for a big connection. And so Robert E. Lee gets it out to the 37-yard line. Jamie, that's the best you feel good about him all of a sudden. Well, Marcus Jackson, number one, breaking the tackle in the end zone, now showing the strength of the arm of the outside there. Very in nice play. Inside reverse handoff to Jason Williams. He's across midfield, and he rumbles into Rockwall territory, 45 down to the 43-yard line. And another Robert E. Lee first down. Two big plays, a pass to Jonathan Williams, 
and a run by Jason Williams of 20. He's over 100 yards for the night, well over 100, and the Red Raiders are in Rockwall territory. Yeah, and, and, and they're getting these big plays when they need them, and they're catching Rockwall on their heels, if you will, Bill, and uh, just doing a good, a good job. The prior, prior pass play went for 25. 14-7 Red Raiders were in the third quarter here in uh, Rockwall. Inside handoff, this is Nathan, Nathan Tucker, and Nathan slammed at the line of scrimmage. A little change of pace that time on that quick hitter. And uh, Nathan runs into a bit of a wall that time, led by D. Duncan and Justin Holdsworth. No gain on the play, second down 10. 8.40 left to play here in the third quarter. And right now we have Jason Williams, 19 carries for 122 on the evening as the uh, prior run he had earlier in the drive, way back in their own end of the field. He gets uh, up 20 more on that last carry. 8.30 left to play, third quarter. They're up seven, second and 10 for 43. Far hash, Jackson to throw. Blitz coming, he steps up, rolls out, and fumbles the ball at the 43-yard line. Rockwall will cover it. Holdsworth at the 42, ball jarred loose. Holdsworth covers, and the Rockwall Yellow Jackets take over at their own 42-yard line. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification as you listen to Robert E. Lee, high school football. Well, so Rockwall has it. First down, Eskridge for the first time tonight. Uh, first time in the third quarter. And for the first time in a while, Robert E. Lee had the ball for the last three or four minutes of the second quarter. Handoff inside for Dabney out of the shotgun. And he moves the pile up field from the 42 to the 44-yard line before he's knocked down. Brotherton, number 71, in on that tackle, along with Robert E. Lee's George Faber. So a gain of two and a half. It'll be second down. And Jamie, that, again, one of those plays that kind of deflates that Lee sideline. And so it'll be second down. As Rockwall lines up near the 45-yard line, shotgun, they go left to right, ball in the middle of the field. Snap it to Eskridge. He's going to run the quarterback keeper up field for a yard at the 46, and he is mashed. Oh, boy. He had Faber coming at him, and Matt Giselle, another one of those Red Raider tackling machines. That's a short gain of about two. It'll be third down, and they'll still need six at the 46-yard line. Yeah, that's the first time they run the actual option on the evening, and he's cut down uh, as three white jerseys are there to greet him, led by Faber, as you mentioned. So it'll be third down, big play here for Robert E. Lee defensively. Shotgun Eskridge, two receivers split left, he rolls that way. There goes Rod Brown, he hits him as he throws downfield and he uh, misses the intended receiver on that left side down there on that right, far right side, Michael Daniels and Eskridge was hurried by Rod Brown on that play and it'll be fourth down. And just a great a great bit of pressure coming from Rod Brown and uh, a couple other white shirts chasing after him on the play. and. Uh, do a great, great job to rush the passer, and he throws beneath his receiver, Tanner, on the far side of the field. Colby Ray checks into the game, and again, they, on fourth down, line up as if they might go for it, and now Eskridge will back into punt formation. They appear to do that every time. Nine yards back, high snap. He pulls it down, punts it, end over, end kick. This ball will bounce at the 10 and go out of bounds inside the 10. That's pretty effective. Jonathan Williams couldn't get to that ball. And it goes out of bounds at about the nine yard line. So Lee has had two drives here in the second half, Jamie, and both of them have started inside their own 10 yard line. Yeah, not the uh, kind of pressure you want to put on a young quarterback, Bill. And, and you mentioned the sideline being deflated, but the, I think the defense right there makes a big stand. They know they'll have to step up with the injuries on the offensive side. And I think they regain a little bit of confidence for the Red Raiders. Well, this could also be one of those great gut check games, Randy, for Robert E. Yeah, Lee. Yeah, well, this one well, the last two uh, games they played have been tough enough, and uh, they're just trying to find a little bit of identity tonight and uh, overcome some adversity as well. From the nine-yard line, handoff, this is Jason Williams. Jason punches it to the 10, and a pretty good tackle made that time by a couple of uh, Rockwall defenders. Looks like D. Duncan Check that number 19, Tyler Dodd, in on that tackle, along with uh, their number 45, Josh Robinson. And so it'll be second down and nine for the Red Raiders at the 10-yard line. 6.43 left to play here in the uh, third quarter with Robert E. Lee leading at 14-7 and trying to gain field position, trying to move the football upfield after a, a slow start here in the third quarter. Now back to pass it, Jackson. He's going to fall down under pressure, and he's finally sacked for a loss back at the three-yard line. They were coming on that play, and there were just too many of them to block. Finally, Rockwall's number 38, uh, Patrick Moore, uh, make that Trevor Norris, the linebacker, bowls him over, and it'll be uh, third down and long for the Red Reds. Yeah, he also had help on the far side from Chris Parma, too, Bill, uh, who just uh, came in and really caught Jackson off guard, and uh, he, he kind of lost his footing, too, and fell right down on his rear. So now 
it'll be third down, and the Red Raiders facing a third and 15 with 5.54 left to play in the third. Dangerous territory here with the ball back at their own four-yard line. They need to get some field position out of this. They stack three receivers and pitch the football this way. It's Jason Williams upfield to about the seven, about the 12. He lowered his shoulder and bulldozed this for yardage. Not enough for the first down, but enough to at least give the Red Raiders some punting room. And of course, with Preston Hill on the sideline, that means that uh, Josh Burke comes in to punt. So Preston's injury affects them two ways, not only in the quarterbacking end of it, but the uh, kicking as well. Josh Burke will punt from the goal line. And this is big here. It's a low snap. Burke will take it, punts it out of there. Not a bad kick for his first one. The ball will be taken by Dodd and returned to about the 33-yard line. That's a gutsy play on the bounce by Dodd in traffic and great field position at the Lee 34-yard line by Rockwall. And Randy, right quite now, honestly, uh, Rockwall's kind of the feel of this game right now is, is yeah. even though Red, Raider, Red Raiders have the lead, the feel of the game right now is in Rockwall. Well, they definitely have field, uh, you know, the position on the field to their advantage and uh, deep down in lead territory as they uh, start this drive. Well, the Red Raider defense has to step up here. First down at the uh, Red Raider 34 yard line. Two receivers split left and one to the right. Shotgun snap to Eskridge. Lee rushes four. Inside handoff, Mathis and he's crashed for no gain on the play. Very well done that time. Looks like Faberin on that tackle, along with Brotherton and along with Rod Brown, who's having a heck of a ball game. Dusty Rhodes Marine and KTBB Sports are teaming up for the Dusty Rhodes Marine player of the game. The player of the game tonight, Dusty Rhodes Marine, will donate $50 in that player's name to the KTBB Scholastic All-Stars. Hey, Rod Brown could be one of those players. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's, he's had a hand in several nice defensive plays. Loss of a yard, second down on 11, back in the 35. Shotgun, two players standing next to Eskridge as they hand off, no fake the handoff. Eskridge looking to throw the deep ball down there and he's got his man, tight end Cole Wardell at the 10. Excellent play action fake and he throws the ball deep and nails the receiver at about the Robert E. Lee 10 yard line for a 25 yard game. And it comes just at the right time for Walkwall as they speed back the line of scrimmage now. He had man to man coverage and he just tossed up a nice pass and uh, where only Wardell could catch it. Jeremy Moore in coverage that time, but Wardell is just taller. So it's first and goal just inside the 10. Here's the inside handoff, Mathis to the six and he takes a hard lick in the chops by a Red Raider, that's Matt Uzell. Also in on that tackle for Robert E. Lee, Jacoby McKenzie, but it's a gain of four right at five yards. Second and goal at the five. 350 left to play yeah, in Lee, the third. Lee's backs to the wall right now. They have to have a good goal line stand to hopefully keep Rockwall uh, out of the end zone, and they owe him one anyway. 14-7 Red Raiders, but Rockwall threatening. Second and goal at the Red Raider five-yard line. Dabney in the backfield alongside Eskridge. They hand the ball to him, and he's in trouble, and Jacoby McKenzie gets it. McKenzie has made back-to-back -back plays for Robert E. Lee. Dropped him, Jamie, for a loss of about a yard at the six. Yeah, and that's what you love to see out of that big defensive tackle right there in the middle, the run stopper, Jacoby McKenzie, not only makes the tackle, but makes the tackle for a loss. 3.15 in the clock ticking. Rockwall with third down and goal. Actually, they marked the ball at around the five and a half. And here we go, near hash, going left to right, late third, lead by seven. Eskridge, shotgun snap coming. Make the handoff to Dabney, rolls out to the right. Remember, he can run, he'll, he will, and he'll run out of bounds or be thrown out of bounds by Uzel at around the three-yard line. He was going for the pile on Matt. Uzel says, no thank you, and meets him over there in the near corner. And so it'll be fourth down and goal at around the three, and uh, they're going to call timeout. They'll call timeout with 2.45 to go in the third. The Red Raiders lead it 14 to seven. We're back in 30 seconds. Kind of goal at the three yard line, 2.45 left to play here in the third quarter. You know, I mean, Rockwall's in a position. They lost a close game a week ago, eight days ago to Mesquite Horn. And now they've got a decision to make. I got to think you got to take the field goal. Yeah, you try to get points here because if you get held down and stop, well, you have Lee backed up inside their own five. But nonetheless, Lee's done their job by stopping you and uh, keeping you off the scoreboard. 
And, uh, you know, this could still be a field position game if they don't make it or if they don't try a field goal here, and that's still to their advantage as well. Jamie, last week they missed a 28-yard field goal. Rockwell did late in the fourth quarter, and they wound up losing a triple overtime game to Horn. And without a doubt, that's got to factor in on this decision, Bill. It looks like they will go for it here, knowing they got the lead offense pinned back deep if they don't get it. Fourth and goal at the three. They line up as if they're going to go for it. They stack uh, double slots right and left. Mathis in the backfield alongside Eskridge. Lee loads up the line of scrimmage. Snap it to Eskridge. Handoff. Mathis. No, fake. Eskridge throws to the back of the end zone. Overthrows Dabney. He overthrows Dabney. Good pressure coming. Fake to Mathis. Eskridge tries the play action rollout and good coverage. And the Red Raiders hold on fourth and goal at the three. And that is a huge play. And uh, they just do a great job of coverage. And a little bit of pressure there towards the end by uh, Mr. Brown again on Eskridge. He has to hurry the ball and overthrows his intended receiver, Dabney, at the back of the end zone. And Jamie, how big is that? Yeah, that's huge, Bill. Credit Jonathan Williams for the coverage in the back of the end zone as the running back crosses the field. Williams stays with him all the way. He was the man the Red Raiders moved back there to safety this week. Good coaching move there. Now the Red Raiders need a drive. They hand off to Williams, coming near side. Williams out to the six, and he had to earn that last yard the hard way. Took a pretty big hit that time. But he did pick up three yards on that play, and with the 225 left to play here in the third, the Red Raiders will have the ball near the seven, call it a gain of about four, it'll be second down and six. Right, Bill, but it's time for them to, to mount a drive, and the kind of drive that, that championship teams need to get them out of the back of the end zone. Uh, obviously, you want to get points here, but they must get a couple first downs to give them some, some of the advantage in field possession. Two minutes left to play in the third. Red Raiders second down and six at their own seven. Here's Nathan Tucker, a little quick hitter upfield at about the 12 and close to a first down for the fullback, Nathan Tucker. Again, they use him that little uh, counter play, and uh, they, it's a very nice change of pace. Of course, the Red Raiders have had, been blessed with two good backs in recent years, Peyton Price. And Keandre Smith and Tyrone Ross yeah. before those guys, and uh, they, they've had that uh, they've had that that luxury, and they're trying to make that out of Nathan Tucker. Pretty good running play. Yeah, just inside, a little quick hitter, and uh, that's the kind of play as you mentioned. Peyton Price just ate up, uh, went over a thousand yards last year with that type of play, and uh, a big play upcoming, Bill. So it's third down and one, less than a yard. And between the 12 and the 13, here's the inside handoff, and there's not much push going as Jason Williams is fighting for it. The ball taken away by Holdsworth, but the whistle had blown, and I don't think he got the uh, first down, fellas, as uh, the handoff that time. Was that Tucker, Jamie, was that Tucker or Williams with the football? That was Nathan Tucker, Nathan Tucker. on okay. the inside, Bill, there. They need to get nearly to the 14-yard line at this point. They're at about the 13-and-a-half make that 12 and a half. They need to get to the 13, so it will be fourth down. And they got to punt it. You, got, you can't take that chance. Josh Burke will come in. It's fourth down. The Red Raiders did not get it. They tried that little inside handoff to Tucker, and that time the uh, Rockwall Yellow Jackets do a good job to smell it out. Burke again having to punt from the goal line just like he did before. They need a good snap, and they need some D with 2.29 seconds left in the third. This time a good snap. Rush comes, Burt gets a pretty good kick out of there, not bad. This one will be fair caught at the 38-yard line by Tyler Dodd with 20.2 to go. Well, the Red Raider defense is being tested tonight by this Rockwall team and by field position. Preston Hill is out of the ball game, tweaked his knee. Uh, it is an MCL problem, not an ACL, which would mean that Preston is, is a good chance, a, a chance that he'll play Thursday night against Longview, don't know for sure. But he's not in there right now. Marcus Jackson, the junior, having to run the team. And the Red Raiders not able to generate much off. No, 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 not without him. And uh, and you got to give credit to Rockwall's defense. But the thing with Preston Hill, he was having such a great night. He was perfect at six for six and moving his team down the field. And uh, that's an unfortunate injury for Preston. Late third quarter, Red Raiders up seven. Snap it to Estridge. He rolls and hands the football off to Mathis on the draw to the 30. Dragged down after a gain of about 11 near the 26-yard line by Robert Ely's Beard, the uh, Adrian Beard, the cornerback. And that play was a pretty good-looking 
draw play because Eskridge takes the handoff and sort of sprints like he's going to roll out and then the counter coming back the other way from Matt. Yeah, the misdirection, uh, they haven't shown that a lot and I believe that's the second time, Bill, and uh, they run it well and uh, Mathis finds a hole for a nice 12-yard gain in the first half. At the 26-yard line, two receivers split left, two to the right. Whistle blows at the snap because the third quarter comes to an end. After three here in Rockwall, Robert E. Lee 14, Rockwall 7, back in one minute. which they've had the entire second half. Lee's average starting position, Coatsy, the six-yard line on three possessions. And so it'll be a first down and 10 at the 26-yard line. Snap it, blitz coming. He uh, throws the middle screen to Dabney at the 20-yard line. Dabney down to the 16-yard line, and that could be another first down. Very close on that little bubble screen to Taylor Dabney, who's run that play two or three times tonight. Red Raiders finally bring him down, but uh, that's either going to be first down and 10 or second down and short, depending on where they mark the ball. Just underway in the fourth, and they're going to measure here with 11.41 left to play. And they're going to spot that ball somewhere, Randy, around the 17 yard. Yeah, it appears that way. And it's a nice play call. They, they get the, the front coming in from Lee, and the quarterback dumps it off back inside, and there's two blockers in front of Dabney as he makes the catch, and he kind of wiggles his way free and gets the first downs, Coatsy. So, as they stretch it out, it's going to be a first down for the uh, Rockwall Yellow Jackets. And the Red Raiders have uh, bent but not broken tonight, except on their one touchdown play. And uh, they're being challenged again. Clock restarts with this first down play. Again, it's marked it around the Robert E. Lee 17. Rockwall is on the field position battle here in the second half. The Red Raiders haven't been able to move it much. Two receivers left. Shotgun snap. Red Raiders show blitz, and here they come. Fake the inside handoff. Roll out this time. They hit him as he throws, and it's completed to Wardell, the tight end, and he's down to the two-yard line, first and goal. Roll out pass to Cole Wardell, the tight end because the blitz was coming that time. He had to roll out, and a senior makes that play as he finds the receiver and his first and goal rock one. And, and Wardell is actually his second choice as Tanner's off in the corner of the end zone to, uh, covered tightly. He finds Wardell on the inside, running right along with him. He makes the connection, and Wardell is wrapped up uh, near the one-yard line. And so, with the lead leading by seven, here's first and goal, just about the one-yard line. Uh, it'll be the quarterback, Eskridge, takes the snap into the end zone, touchdown. He didn't even look at anybody else. Eskridge says, I'll do that myself, thank you very much. And he runs it into the end zone, and it's one point away from being a tied ball game. Yeah, he does just a very smart thing, just quick snap real quick, and he busts through. And uh, and like you say, he does a great job of leading his team downfield on a short field, a less than a 40-yard drive uh, right there for Rockwall. And so with 11.01 to go in the fourth, Tanner will try to tie this football game up. Out of the Eskridge hole, the kick is on the way by Tanner, and the left footer splits it, and it's a tied ball game with 11.01 to play in the fourth. Lee 14, Rockwall 14. We're back in one minute. Defensively forced a Robert E. Lee punt. They had a short field to work with, and they this time they made the Red Raiders. Yeah, yeah, they did, Coatsy. Four plays, 38 yards in uh, three minutes and a second. As Zach es Eskridge uh, completes a couple big passes on the drive and then dives over from one yard out, and we got a deadlock as uh, we pretty much start the fourth quarter. 14-14, 59 seconds into the final period, and oh, this is a big ball game for Robert E. Lee. Preston Hill on the sideline, injured. Not necessarily for the year or anything like that, but out definitely tonight uh, with a dinged up knee, an MCL, which the medial collateral is uh, considered way less serious than the anterior cruciate. And so let's wish Preston the best. Marcus Jackson trying to pick up the slack. Red Raiders haven't been able to muster a lot of offense. Josh Burke takes it at the 11 on the kickoff, coming up field with a hold of the 30 and moves it upfield to the 31-yard line. So a pretty good field position for Robert E. Lee to work with. And what they need now is for that big offensive line to step up, open up, and make Jason Williams a whole lot of room to yeah, run. Yeah, and that's going to be uh, you know, the big thing they're looking at. Jason, by my count, uh, Coatsy, is 22 carries for 134 yards through three quarters of play. And uh, let's see if he's got another good six to ten carries in him for the evening. 10.54 to go in the fourth. Robert E. Lee, touchdown pass to Jonathan Williams, touchdown run by Jason Williams, but that came in the second quarter. Marcus Jackson under center. He puts Mason 
in motion. Penalty flag, and the Red Raiders are just having all kinds of problems here uh, lining up and uh, not committing five-yard penalties. This is at least three of these in the uh, second half so far, and I'm not sure who's to blame for that or whatever, but for whatever reason, the Red Raiders have had three motion penalties. That's exactly right. The first one uh, took them all the way back inside uh, the rock wall five, uh, as you recall, and they, they couldn't get out of that hole. And right here now, that's their eighth penalty in the ball game with at least four, as you mentioned, being of that variety for 50 yards against Robert E. Lee. And really, it's the most penalties they've had in any game this far this season. Well, and so they'll take it now from the 26-yard line. First and 15 is a much tougher call. Back to pass Jackson. He steps up, he fires downfield, and underthrows the intended receiver, Jacob Amy, at the 42-yard line. Coverage provided by Craven. Make that Cooper Elam the linebacker. And so it'll be second and 15 for the Red Raiders. And, and really, Robert E. Lee can't get in any kind of rhythm right now uh, because of the penalties have hurt him, and they just can't seem to get any semblance of a, of a, a ball game going. And uh, that's their first incompletion on the night. Uh, with Preston Hill was six for six, and Marcus was four for four coming into that play. Tyler Fleet checks out of the ball game. Amy stays in. Jonathan Williams splits wide to the right side. Mason, the tight end, comes to the right. This time Jackson under center sends a slot receiver to the left, fakes the handoff. He's rolling to the outside. He can throw it or run it. He's going to run it upfield to the 30-yard line and will pick up about five yards after all that. He got most of what they lost on the uh, – penalty back but it'll still be third down and at least 10 for Robert E. Lee. Yeah he has to he gets flushed out of the pocket by uh, three or four orange shirts as they chase him to the far side of the field and he does a good job just to collect and pick up and not make a mistake by throwing the ball once he's past the line of scrimmage as he kind of pumped but he just kept his footing and was chased out of bounds on the far side. So now Robert E. Lee again having uh, just not been able to muster much offense here in the third and early part of the fourth quarter with a third and 10 at their own 30 yard line. They get two in the backfield this time and two receivers split right. Back to pass Jackson. Jackson flushed out. Now he's sacked and a flag down. Fumbled on the play. Rockwall thinks they have it, but there was a flag down. It's Rockwall's football after the Jackson fumble his second, and it is Rockwall's ball. No flag. That was the uh, beanbag the uh, referee dropped there to spot the fumble. Wow. And it's their ball at the 24-yard line. And Robert E. Lee really struggling right now in every part of their football game offensively. Yeah, and Jackson just can't hold on to the football when he's going down. He took it down. He had a few seconds to throw the ball and had to pull back into the pocket. And all of a sudden, he disappeared. And then a uh, the little beanie bag, he's going flying uh, through the field, as the officials called it. Rockwall with a golden opportunity. Wow. With 9.57 to go here in the fourth, Lee fumbles. Second fumble for Jackson. And it's a uh, penalty flag. flag down in the backfield in the uh, defensive backfield of Robert E. Lee, and they're going to call a substitution penalty here against uh, Robert E. Lee. Is that right, Jamie? That's, correct. That's exactly right. Too many men on the field for the Red Raiders. And again, in all this confusion, and you're talking about a program that hasn't lost much recently, in recent years, and especially when it comes to district games, they're a little bit, they seem a little bit uh, out of sorts right now. And uh, it's first down at the 19-yard line. Shotgun, Eskridge. He's going to keep it, and he's going to run into a wall of Robert E. Lee white uniforms near the line of scrimmage. Short gain on the play. Rod Brown, George Faber help out on the tackle. He got a little bit out of that. Got about a yard. It'll be second down and about nine coming here. Check that second down and four. It was first down and five. It'll be second and four. But again, the ball spotted is about the 19. Second and four with 9.30, and the clock ticking. This game has moved along faster than we thought. Rockwall running as much as they're throwing tonight. And Eskridge, shotgun snap. This time he throws, pitches the ball near side. This is Tanner, and Tanner's going to be hit at about the 15-yard line. Tanner tried that little wide, that little flanker reverse, and Lee did a good job of containing him and forcing him back to the inside where the reinforcements could get him. Coming out of the game, both Brotherton and Jacoby McKenzie. It'll be third down and a yard uh, at give, the 15. Give credit to Cuba along with Quet Nicholson for uh, maintaining their position and closing in uh, to, to wrap up on uh, Tanner, the wide receiver on the reverse. Nose of the football just inside the 15, third and short. Near the 14-yard line of the Red Raiders. Slot right, I backfield this time. Pitch the ball to the backfield, and it's a first down to the 10, down inside the 10 to the 6-yard line. That's a little bit different for the uh, 
Rockwall Yellow Jackets as they hand the ball off to Cameron Calabrese, a senior 5'11 running back. They just pitched it to him from under center and let him just pile drive the football down to the six. Right now, everything going the way of the Yellow Jackets. Uh, uh, this could be the second consecutive uh, mistake that Lee has cost Lee points if Rockwall can cash in here uh, with a big first and goal now. Well, remember long you struggled to beat these guys last year. Yeah, right here in this building. In this building, and, uh, and now Robert E. Lee is having all they want. First and goal at the six. The Red Raiders put four men up and two linebackers. Snap it to Eskridge, and he's going to take it and take it to the one-yard line. Red Raiders will run blitzing, but Eskridge found some running room anyway, and he picks up yardage down to the one where it'll be second and goal. Yeah, he just uh, takes a snap and immediately pushes right behind the center, and with his 6'3 frame, he pushes right along, and uh, three or four white shirts uh, there to meet him along with Brotherton and Wall and company for Lee. Second and goal at the one-yard line. Rockwall fired up right now about the possibility of taking the lead on the defending state champ. They do it again to Calabrese, but he's hit in the backfield this time and does not get in. The surge coming that time, number 71, Brotherton, and among the others, George Faber, number 33. It's 7.20 left to play in the ball game, and they're still stuck inside the one-yard line third down. And Lee's already had one goal line stand earlier in the half where they stop Rockwall at the three, and let's see if they can get another one now. Uh, I don't know if Rockwall can't get in here. Rockwall may just try to get points and get the lead if they don't score a touchdown on this play. Eskridge gets the play from the sideline, brings it in. Challenging the Robert E. Lee goal line, trying to take the lead. Mathis in the backfield with him. Eskridge hands it to Mathis. Mathis to the left, to the goal line. Did he get in? The Rockwall players say he did, but the officials haven't said. Now they do. Touchdown, Mathis and Rockwall has taken the lead at 20 to 14. He gets the ball and surges off the left side. He gets a nice block up front from his left tackle, uh, Colton White at 6'2", 230, and Zach Eastup, the left guard, make a nice push, and he just pushes as hard as he can and just barely gets past uh, the plane of the end zone for six for Rockwall. Swinging gate, they line up for the extra point, and now they shift into the regular formation. Snap, Tanner puts it up, and it's good. And at 6.50 left to play in the fourth, Rockwall has taken a 21-14 lead over Robert E. Lee back in one minute. It is 21-14. Rockwall has scored 14 unanswered points here in the second half. And they cashed in on two fumbles from Marcus Jackson. Six plays, 24 yards, and 3.07 as Marcus Mathis takes it in from one yard out. And the Red Raiders trail late in the ball game, Coatsy. Jamie, what are they doing to Robert E. Lee? Well, first of all, Bill, they're starting off with terrific field position. Four drives in the second half, and they have three of the four have been on the Red Raiders' side of the field. Their average field position is the 35-yard line of Robert E. Lee, and they're doing a nice job of mixing it up with the pass and run, and we're seeing more of the run here in the second half. And now the Red Raiders have to play catch up. They have had problems in recent games as slow starters. Tonight they started well, but they haven't played very well in the second half offensively. Uh, they've been flat and the turnovers haven't helped and uh, defense is playing as hard as they can, but their backs have been against the wall the entire second half. Short kickoff. And this one will be fielded at the 12 yard line by Robert E. Lee. Coming up field in the 20 out to the 25 yard line. It appears to be Lee's J.K. Berry. And it'll be Red Raider football. Again, Preston Hill was banged up late in the second quarter, limped off the field, is now in street clothes, and will not play the rest of this night. Question is, uh, what about Thursday against Longview at Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium? Right now, that's not a concern for Robert E. Lee. They're having more than enough difficulty winning this game against a team they were favored to beat. Marcus Jackson takes the snap, rolls out, sets up, throws over the middle, caught Amy 40. He's at the 45, he's got blockers to the 50, to the 40, to the 35, cuts back to the 30. Amy down to the 25, down to the 22 yard line. Jacob Amy's bigger than everybody else and he's also faster than most and that might be the spark the Red Raiders need. That's 52 yards and a first down for Robert E. Lee. He just really runs a crossing pattern about 12 yards downfield. 
Jackson patiently in the pocket, finds it, crossing the middle, winds up and delivers a dart. And Amy does the rest, and it takes about five or six orange shirts, and one of them is down on the field, Coachy. Yeah. And how about the block of Michael Mason, not once, but twice on yeah. the play, helping out <laughs> downfield. Yeah, how about yeah, how about that effort? And again, Mason a senior, it. and he's played great football tonight. He's been in a lot and has played very well. The injured player for the uh, Rockwall Yellow Jackets, cornerback Jamil Owens. He is up and uh, trotting off the field under his own power. And Lee had, before this right here, uh, Coatsy, they had their last three drives were all three and out. And this is a big play to get them that end of the field and maybe they can get on in the end zone and tie this game back up and uh, uh, put it to their defense's hands to get the ball back. Marcus Jackson comes over to the sideline, gets the word from the coaches. Jonathan Williams follows him back to the huddle. And now the Red Raiders send a receiver out wide to the left side. They go with Amy in a slot right. Perry is in the backfield, by the way. Fake the handoff to him, roll out. Jackson throws a little screen pass to Perry to the 20. He's down to the 15, down to the 10-yard line. It's first down, Robert Robert Ely Red Raiders. J.K. Perry, is that right, a 5'9 junior? We show Jamal senior. Mitchell. I'm sorry, Jamal Mitchell. I've got a different roster here. I'm sorry, I have a different roster. Yeah, Jamal Mitchell, my bad. Jamal Mitchell, uh, the uh, sophomore, 5'9", doing a very nice job to run that ball down to the 11. And Lee hasn't run that a lot tonight. That's only the second screen they've run all night, but they find him over the middle, and Jackson delivers it on target uh, for another first down for Robert E. Lee. Jamal Mitchell, my bad. Jamal Mitchell doing a great job that time on a couple of different plays. And now Jason Williams is in the game. Whistle blows, and boy, you wonder if Robert E. Lee has committed for the fourth time one of those five-yard procedure-type penalties, which would cost them yardage. Let's see what the officials say about this. And it will be a five-yard walk-off. Am I counting that right, Randy? That's yeah. four of those in the second four half. Four in the second half. That's their tenth penalty in the ballgame for 60 yards. walk has one for five, which happened on, like, the first possession of the game. And so Robert E. Lee set back, now it'll be first down and 15. After getting that first down at the 11-yard line. They send uh, Michael Fuller out wide to the left side. Williams in the backfield. Jonathan Williams split wide to the right, under center. Fake the handoff. Jackson sets up, throws a bullet to the goal line, and Williams had it, and Jonathan then had it knocked away by Bobby Taylor. Ball. Hit the receiver, and then the receiver gets hit by Bobby Taylor, and a nice play by the uh, junior cornerback to break up that pass. It's third down. And you want to second down. Uh, you want to credit Jason Williams with picking up a block from the inside to protect Marcus Jackson, who delivered a dart. And the pass, in fairness to Jonathan Williams, was slightly behind him, but he still had it uh, in his arms where he could have brought it down. Coach. Fuller and Amy split wide to the left side. Williams a little bit angry with himself, come wide to the right. Tight end Fleet's in there, take the handoff. Rolling out, Jackson's in some trouble, throws on the run to the end zone, and it's short and way off the mark that time. Williams, the intended receiver, but the ball bounces at the one. Now it's third down. You had a flag down on the play, Bill. Looks like it'll be a legal man downfield. Smart play by Marcus Jackson there to roll out of the pocket and just get rid of that one rather than take the sack. But it looked like a red Raider -Rader offensive line was too far downfield. And so it'll be a penalty at number 11 yep. against Robert E. Lee. If that, and, uh, if that weren't bad enough, Lee has totally vacated the running game. Wow. They haven't run the ball in at least the last six plays by Michael. And we thought that might be a key for them in the second half, just keep pounding the ball to Jason Williams, but they just haven't been able to do that, have they? Nope. Their field position was bad to Terrible, start yeah. with, and it kind of got them out of their game, it seems like. But, of course, there's time left. 5.08 to go. The Red Raiders need a score. It's third and 15. They put Jonathan Williams in, in a slot left this time. Deep shotgun for Marcus Jackson and another whistle. And a timeout this time by Rockwall, and we'll take it with them. They lead the Red Raiders 21-14 in the fourth, back in 30 seconds. Pushing otherwise, they have two downs to do it, too. So now, Fuller and Amy split left. Williams comes wide to the right. Junior quarterback Marcus Jackson trying to make magic here from the 16-yard line. He's in a deep slot. Jason Williams in a slot right. Four wides, a tight end fleet, deep shotgun, snap back to Jackson. He throws the screen pass over on the left side to Fuller. Fuller to the 10 yard line down to the, maybe the eight. He threw that little uh, wide receiver hitch pass, if you will, to the wide side of the field to Fuller. And Fuller had a little running room. That should get Robert E. Lee 
within eight yards of the first down, but not nearly enough. It's fourth down, and the Red Raiders have a decision to make here. They've got all three timeouts left. Do you take the three and let your defense get the ball back? They're going to take a timeout to talk it over. 4.43 left, 21-14 Rockwall, back at 30 seconds. All right, coaches Johnson and Lance, fourth down. Red Raiders still face a fourth down in about eight. Uh, first, you, Coach Johnson, what do you do? Uh, well, you can get the ball uh, at the one-yard line. Uh, I'd just go and, uh, uh, you know, I personally would run it wide with Jason Williams on the stretch play. We'll probably see a pass in the end zone. Let's see what happens, Jamie. Jamie, they're going to go for it, aren't they? Yeah, and I think that's the right decision to make. If uh, Robert E. Lee was perfect in the kicking game this year, maybe they kick it here and hope for the defense to make a play. But there's been some struggles, so uh, I agree with the uh, call here by the Red Raiders. Fourth down and eight at the nine-yard line. Fuller split left, two receivers right. Shotgun, Jason Williams in the backfield. Snap the football. Jackson rolls out, throws the ball to the end zone and overthrows the intended receiver, Tyler Fleet. And the ball goes over to Rockwall. Lee gets close again, but no cigar. 4.38 left to play, and they're still down seven. And you know, everything that could go wrong, at least since the end of the second quarter when the, they failed to score points on that drive, and we got to go back to that because that's been the difference of having a two-score lead coming into the second half. And then you have the unfortunate injury to your starting quarterback. Uh, but all this together, along with poor field position, has been trouble for Lee tonight. Well, now Rockwall takes over. Now the Red Raiders need a turnover. They uh, forced one in the first half, did they not? Recovered a fumble that's, on a kickoff. That's correct. Uh, but they fumbled the ball twice here in the second, and that has led to a couple of Rockwall scores. Now Rockwall takes over at the nine-yard line. Going right to left. The Red Raiders run blitz. The uh, handoff goes to uh, Dabney, and he moves it at right tackle out to the 10. Not a whole lot out there. Beard makes the stop for Robert E. Lee, but the Red Raiders taking some defensive chances that appeared that time. A little run blitz trying to, with 419 to go, get the football back. Really all they have to do here is just stop them three and out and get the ball. They've got plenty of time to uh, to do something with it if they can hold Rockwall here and get the thing back. And if they can do it down here, they should get good field position That's out correct. of it. Shotgun snap to Eskridge coming. Two receivers split to the near side of the field. Hand off to Dabney. Dabney's a little jitterbug, and he picks up yardage out to the 16. He's going to be about two, maybe three yards short of the first down. But he picked up decent yardage that time, about five on that carry. Brotherton comes back out of the game, and Mario Trimble goes back in. He does, he's so small that he, he gets behind a couple of his uh, 6'2", 250-pound linemen. He can fall behind them before he's even uh, touched by a lead defender. Here's a gigantic play for lead defense. It is third down and about three and a half to the 16-yard line. Red Raiders must hold here, or certainly need to hold. Four down linemen for Robert E. Lee. Eskridge in the shotgun, a stand-up end for the Red Raiders. They show blitz, and here they come. Eskridge, draw play handoff to Mathis. Mathis, Uzel, Matt Uzel misses a tackle or made a dive for it and couldn't quite get there in time, actually. And it's out to the 21-yard line, and that's first down. Matt had the whole field and made a pretty good dive at the feet of Mathis, but didn't quite arrive in time to prevent Mathis from getting the first down. Yeah, it's a huge first down as they, uh, they get a fresh set of downs and uh, keep the ball moving. And they're, they're pretty much going to keep it on the ground here, I would suspect. Yeah, why not? Three yep. minutes left to play in the football game. It's Rockwall by seven, 21-14 in the district opener. And they haven't had much success recently. This would be a huge win for them. Handoff, this is Mathis, not much available that time. Inside, but he keeps it in bounds, as they say. Tackle again made by Jacoby McKenzie. After a short gain on the play, maybe a half yard. Scoreboard says really nothing to post there. But what Rockwall wants now is the clock ticking. And it'll be second down and 10. They put Wardell out of the game. Coming back in is Dabney. Since they don't huddle, they don't call a substitution infraction. And here's the snap going to Estridge. He rolls out and hands the ball off on that little draw play again to Mathis. And Mathis is buried by Robert E. Lee. Faber with a nice tackle again. They've tried that play a couple of times tonight. Quarterback begins a rollout and then hands the ball off to a running back. That time the little runner Marcus Mathis uh, not able to juke George Faber. And now timeout call. 
Well, that's more or less a zone read play, if you will. Kind of like what Texas runs. A, the quarterback has the decision to hand the ball off or fake it. And a couple times he's done that, and he's run the ball away. And uh, that play at least snuffs it out. They read it perfectly, and they lose three yards. Wrap around his right leg back at about the 40-yard line. Standing by himself. Nobody around him right now. He's in street clothes. His absence in the second half has hurt Robert E. Lee. It is third and 13 at the 19-yard line. Shotgun again, three wide, one back standing back there beside Zach Eskridge, the quarterback. Lee blitzes. Eskridge makes the handoff, rolls out, pitches to Mathis. Mathis with running room, 25-30, first down 40, 45-50. What a nice call that time, and they still haven't made the tackle, and he's across the 45 to the 42-yard line. Laquette Nicholson didn't lock him up at his own 40-yard line, and he picked up another 15 yards. And that little screen pass to Mathis off a of Robert E. Lee blitz, and that's 38 yards, and that might be the nail in the coffin with a minute 51 to go. It's really a great play call as they flood everything out to the right. Quarterback fakes it and turns around and has a receiver wide open, not a white shirt in sight. He makes the catch, and he comes down, and uh, Quet Nicholson just – had him tackled and let him go, and he picks up, what, an additional 12 to 15, as you mentioned, and a huge play for Rockwall. Yeah, minute 35 to go. Barring a turnover now, Robert E. Lee may never get the football back. They have one timeout left, a minute 29 left. They lead, uh, Rockwall lead 21-14. Here's the handoff to Mathis to the 35. Look out, Mathis picking up good yardage and what may be another first down to the 30-yard line. He is eating them up right now. The Red Raiders are trying to play strip ball and they missed another tackle. And with a minute 19 to go, that'll move the sticks. And Jamie, there's just not much Lee can do right now except try to strip the football. Yeah, that's exactly right, Bill. They've got to somehow get the ball. So that, when you try to do that and try to tackle the football, that ends up causing more missed tackles. You saw that there on that last play. It's an excited rock wall sideline. This would be a landmark win for them. They haven't had many in recent years in district play, but this one would be big, under a minute left. First down to the 30, and now Eskridge takes a knee, and Lee can stop it one more time with 53 seconds left, and the Red Raiders will do that. 21-14, Rockwall leading with uh, 50 seconds left. We're back in one minute. All right, take care, Doug. 50.7 left to play, and it has been a rough second half for Robert E. Lee. They just haven't made any plays offensively, and now they face the tough situation. They're out of timeouts, and a snap following the timeout to Zach Eskridge. He takes a knee, and Lee can't stop it anymore. Rockwall may have to snap it one more time. This football game is going to be over, and Robert E. Lee is going to be 2-3, and three, and 0-1 in the district. Yeah, yeah, a missed opportunity late in the second quarter to score with a with a flag, and then two turnovers that Rockwall uh, changes into two touchdowns, and that's been the tail of the tape, and uh, it's going to be an L for Lee and a big one here to open district play. One more time at 16 seconds left. Eskridge will take a knee, and this football game is over. Rockwall has defeated Robert E. Lee tonight. Scott Smith, their head coach, calls his team together. They're celebrating on the Rockwall sideline, and they have upset the defending state champion Red Raiders, and Rockwall celebrates tonight. The final score, Rockwall 21, Robert E. Lee 14.